Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. A religious freedom advocacy outfit has revealed that Christians are 10 times more likely to be killed by militants than Muslims in Nigeria. The Observatory for Religious Freedom in Africa, or ORFA, stated that between October 2019 and September 2020, the number of Christians killed in the country was 9.6 times higher than the number of Muslims. During the same period, Christian believers were 59 times more likely to be kidnapped by jihadi militants such as Boko Haram. British newspaper Express quoted ORFA director of research Gideon Paramalam as saying that post-independence military governments in Nigeria have done nothing to prevent the killings of Christians. He also urged Britain and Western democracies not to sit on the fence because Christians are facing existential threat in the West African nation. Six weeks after the U.S. Supreme Court removed the constitutional right to abortion, Indiana has become the latest state to enforce abortion restrictions. Republican Governor Eric Holcomb signed a landmark bill into law that bans abortions in almost all cases with exceptions on Friday, August 5th. It replaces the state's present 22-week abortion ban with a near-total ban on abortion. Under the bill, abortions would be permitted in cases of rape and incest. It would also be allowed if the fetus has anomalies or if the health of the mother is in jeopardy. The legislation passed by Indiana lawmakers on Friday, August 5th, will come into effect on September 15. In addition, any medical practitioner who provides or abets abortion can also lose their license and face imprisonment. A delegation of the World Council of Churches, or WCC, made a visit to war-torn Ukraine six months after the Russian invasion. The delegation was led by Acting General Secretary Reverend Johan Soka. The visit from August 1st through the 5th enabled the group to interact with heads of local churches and state institutions working with religious issues. The WCC delegation also held meetings with the Metropolitan Epiphany of Kiev and All Ukraine and Archbishop Evstrathiv of Chernihiv. Soka also met with the Metropolitan Onofri of Kiev and All Ukraine of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The delegation invited local churches to take part in the upcoming World Council of Churches assembly that will take place from August 31st through September 8th in Germany's Karlsruhe. In June, the WCC Central Committee had issued a statement regarding the ongoing war in the Eastern European country. Prominent American pro-life activist Lila Rose has revealed that video sharing application TikTok has blocked her account and prevented her platform, Live Action, from posting ads. She tweeted that the restriction had extreme political bias. In a statement, Rose said that while they are respectfully demanding the reinstatement of ads on TikTok, they would also work to expand their reach on all other social media platforms. The pro-life leader also added that even though live action ads were banned, Planned Parenthood was allowed to run $80,000 in advertising. Earlier in 2020, the pro-life advocacy group was banned by TikTok because of a human error by a moderator. Similarly, it faced Google censorship last year when the search engine deleted all its online ads and prohibited it from promoting a video on the development of babies in the womb. Pope Francis sent a telegram assuring his closeness to the victims of the Cuban oil tank explosion. In the telegram conveying the Pope's condolences, Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin assured the Holy Father's closeness and prayers to those affected. Addressed to the head of the Cuban Bishops' Conference, Pope Francis assured his spiritual closeness and prayed that the Lord grant them strength. Lightning struck an oil storage facility in Matanzas, which is 60 miles away from the capital, Havana, on Friday night. The fire outbreak caused thousands to flee their homes for safety. It soon spread to another tank the following day, and on Monday, a third tank caught fire. 
Latest reports say that one person died and 17 firefighters are missing. At least 120 people were injured in the blaze. The Latin American nations of Venezuela and Mexico have sent rescue workers to Cuba to provide aid following the appeal of President Miguel Diaz Canal. A Pakistani Catholic rights activist has urged the authorities to stop the teaching of Islamic content in compulsory subjects such as English and Urdu. Activist Peter Jacob, director of the Center for Social Justice deplored the mandatory inclusion of Islamic content in the curriculum. He spoke during a conference hosted by the National Commission for Justice and Peace of the Catholic Episcopate. He said that a commission on education reform ought to be created to examine the educational policies. Mr. Jacob also cited Article 22 of the Pakistan Constitution, which states that no student shall be required to receive religious instruction or take part in a religious ceremony in an educational institution if such instruction or worship is of another faith. Catholic bishops of Nicaragua have expressed solidarity with their brother bishop who was under house arrest on orders of President Daniel Ortega. The statement was read out from all the bishops during Sunday Mass, expressed fraternity and Episcopal communion with Bishop Rolando José Álvarez Lagos of Matagalpa. In the statement, the bishops said that if one member suffers, they all suffer with him. The prelate cited Pope Benedict XVI and said that the Church was proclaiming the gospel of peace and is open to collaboration with all national and global authorities. Bishop Lagos has been under house arrest for being one of the most vocal critics of the Ortega regime. President Ortega has been cracking the whip on the Church for quite some time. He recently expelled missionaries of charity nuns and closed five Catholic radio stations. The oldest member of the College of Cardinals, Cardinal Josef Tomko, passed away at the age of 98 on Monday, August 8th. The Slovakian Cardinal was the Prefect Emeritus of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples. Following a cervical spine injury, he was hospitalized in Rome's Gemelli Hospital on June 25 and was released from the hospital on August 6. He was then taken care of by the Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul. The Slovakian Episcopal Conference urged the faithful to pray for the deceased cardinal. Born in 1924 in present-day Slovakia, Tomko was ordained to the priesthood in 1949 by the then Diocese of Košice. He began a stint in the Roman Curia as an official in the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith and was later appointed Undersecretary of the Congregation for Bishops. In 1985, he was appointed Cardinal by Pope St. John Paul II. He was later named as the prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, where he served until his retirement in 2001. Tomko was also the co-founder of the Institute of St. Cyril and Methodius in Rome. The Pontifical Charity Aid to the Church in Need has started a fundraising drive to support the distribution of Holy Bibles in Ethiopia. The charity recently launched the drive to support priests of the Order of the Imitation of Christ who are engaged in Bible distribution apostolate in the country. ACN is seeking to raise 6,600 euros to support the priests and the translation of the Bible into local languages. The fund will also support the publication of the Catechism in two local languages. The priests engaged in the apostolate say it is essential to give a copy of the Holy Scripture to families that come to the Catholic faith. Founded in the South Indian state of Kerala in 1919, the Order of the Imitation of Christ has had a presence in Ethiopia since 2009. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.